Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. I'm Martin Warwick. We are here at the Smart IoT London event in Docklands and I'm talking with Giles Nelson who is the Senior Vice President Product Management and Marketing at Software AG. Giles, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming to talk to us. What is digital transformation as far as Software AG is concerned? Well, uh, well, it's not just as far as Software AG is concerned, it's, it's the industry in general and mm -hmm. that's one term that has been um, has become current over the last few years. And I think there is still some misunderstanding of really what it means. So it's not about a company using technology, mm. um, which is naturally digital technology. You know, everything that we use is digital. But it's about a company changing the way that they're actually doing business through the use of technology. So it's not about a company using IT to optimize or run existing processes. It's about actually them inventing new business models, digital products, and using the data that they're getting from internally, from their partners, from their customers, and using that in a different way to um, create new revenue streams. And when companies start doing that, then they start becoming digital businesses. Are there many of them around? I presume there aren't that many yet. Well, there are the pure digital companies that perhaps we all know. Yes. Um, but the more interesting way of looking at this is to consider all those companies that actually make up the FTSE, the Dow Jones, the Hang Seng, mm. and look at the miners, the pharmaceutical companies, uh, the broadcasters, and so on, and how they are going through this digital transformation. And yes, again, they are they're using technology today, but how are they changing their business model? How does a miner, for example, perhaps using the Internet of Things to gather a lot of data about their operations, how do they use that to better deliver service to their customers, their partners, etc.? How do they change the way that they do business and their business model with the use of that digital information? That's what the digital transformation is about to them. Thank you. Now that gives us a basis for the enterprises and the companies, mm. the organisations that are digital or wish to become digital. Let's talk about IoT in that respect. How does IoT help drive towards the truly digital company? Well, if I give you an example of a retailer. Um, so if you're a retailer, um, that of course is an industry that has gone through a lot of changes um, in the last 10, 15 years. And retail, real estate now, um, retailers generally have a different attitude towards it than they used to. It's not necessarily the channel or the primary channel. It's actually more of a showcase because people may go in there, they may browse goods, they may order them online later. So it's changing the way that people view that, that real estate which was of course traditionally core to a retailer. So a retailer can then think about, well, how do I start equipping this environment with sensors to give a better experience when somebody comes into the store? And perhaps if I'm, particularly if I'm a luxury goods retailer and I might have high value customers, perhaps they're loyal, perhaps they have spent a lot of money with, with me previously, I may have a lot of data about them. And I might then be able to use predictive models and machine learning to understand, well, this particular person, they've spent this with us previously, they seem to be interested in these things, maybe we should interact th with them in this way when they come into the store. But also now then, if you think about the IoT and equipping that store with sensors about where they're moving around in that store, perhaps what they're looking at, you can add that information to what you already know about them so when you do decide to interact them it can be completely up to date and you're not you uh, won't make the mistake of getting the context wrong so IOT is helping um, augment your existing data about in this case a customer with new information about how they're moving around that store and what they're interacting with much of IOT is about occasional bursty traffic more than anything else. And we know that IoT data streams, can, you can have them 
several million events per second when the things are actually broadcasting and getting stuff out to, yeah. to wherever it's going. What effect does that have on the organisation itself in terms of how that is used, where it's stored, and the security of it, which obviously is highly important? Yes. So, <coughs> yes, security is, is very important, and you need, to, you need to think about that both from a not just from a technical point of view in terms of you know encryption and roles based security and so on but also how then particularly in customer facing industries how you manage that information mm -hmm. and how you um, give permission to people to control it because that's going to that's very important um, I think we've been through the period where we say, well, do you know, uh, hang privacy. Actually, I think pretty much most people think an element of privacy is important. So managing that is, very, is, is crucial. But then with regards to how do you deal with that amount of information? I mean, here's, here's an example. You know, we, we're talking about retail, but let's think of a more industrial example. Mm. So a, um, a steam generation generating machine. So very important for power stations, for example, and so on. So um, they have on them thousands of sensors, and those sensors are producing a lot of information per second, millions of data events per second. Mm. And you think, okay, well, if I'm building an IoT infrastructure and uh, I want to take that information, I want to analyze that, I want to start making decisions on it, perhaps to understand how that machine is operating, is it operating um, at its uh, optimum level, perhaps I'm identifying a problem with the machine and I need to maintain it, you know, whatever the, the application is, um, then you you need to decide well, where you're going to process that data. You don't necessarily want to put millions of data elements from one machine, perhaps you've got a dozen of them, up into a cloud-based service, um, perhaps over a wireless 3G, 4G network to then examine. That doesn't make any sense. So architecturally there, you've got to think in those high volume scenarios about actually putting your analytics close to the edge, edge analytics it's called. So pushing your streaming data analysis um, as close to the data as you can because that's where it makes sense. And you need to, you know, as your architecture develops, as your applications using the IoT get more sophisticated, you need the flexibility to um, have that, have the, the analysis that you're doing centrally, you need it perhaps at the edge. One of the other buzzwords of our, our days at the moment uh, is ecosystems mm -hmm. and partnerships. We've seen transformation in telcos, we've seen the transformation in organisations in a way that people work together and companies work together, cooperate in ways they didn't used to in the past uh, and some of these partnerships are, are long lasting. Mm -hmm. um, we're here at this Smart IoT event in London's Docklands. You're here at Software AG with your booth. What are you showing and what part does the ecosystem and your partnership network play in the way you approach the entire business? Yes. So I think our approach is similar to many companies in this area. So <coughs> with the with the IoT, you know, slightly unusual for a software company, it does intrinsically involve hardware. Now <laughs> we're not going to get into the hardware business ourselves, but we need a story when it comes to you know, if a company comes to us and says, well, you know, we're not quite sure where to get started with this, you've got, you know, some of the answer, but what about hardware and so on and so forth? That we need to partner up with companies that um, know about how to interact with that hardware that a, 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 a prospective customer might have. Um, so that's, that's one thing. But we also have other specialities that we, we need to um, access. So machine learning, for example, um, that's something that's, Mm -hmm. you know, important generally, but very important in the IoT. And we're, we're partnering with a company called Zementis for that. Um, so, yeah, we've got three partners here on our booth with us. There's uh, Cumulosity, um, who um, have a platform to allow one to connect to devices and to get data from those. There's Zementis for the machine learning. And um, there's a partner called ServiceMax, who uh, we work with on field management systems. So if you're somebody, uh, uh, maybe you're going out into the field to service a pipeline or a bit of infrastructure, then having IoT-driven data 
uh, to give you contextually and location-based information about what you're looking at, how you should fix things can be very useful and, and, uh, uh, and make sure that you've got the right tools with you and you're, you're doing your maintenance job in the most efficient way. So that's just three partners, but you know, we've got other more generally, um, you know, service partners and others. And I think the general point here is that IoT is a very, certainly at the moment, and I think for a long time, very partner driven industry. Um, you know, there's people producing hardware, there's people producing the connectivity platforms, there's analytics platforms, there's more general software vendors with you know, what we call a digital business platform, um, such as us. So there's a lot of different parts in actually delivering a full end-to-end -end IoT system and not one vendor can do that on their own. Well, change is certainly in the air, literally and metaphorically. Giles and Nelson, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.